Green Rafuch, the Irish village. Later, Hoyle Hassana, James Clark, a Via Vail Corsi. Shablian or Remission, I guess, a force, a train oil in Ealing Studios, Viscanon of Win Larinke, Summer Daydream in Crookhaven, Lady Higge. Hug oil lucht na heute, ho morsan a Weimer, Gur Ilche Fein, I guess, Ian McIntyre, Kjol Thor, in Nedia Kregene. Schiel Winter Hulewein, Clown or Rev Cardus Foster at Rehain, I guess, Clark, is more Vion. Ni er all do the near the Hedinach and Leru, near Tispanach River Arigade, August Clark Fane, a has and Costas are fat. Ni launach, Rarkana, a hail na heute, and Nede Quegene, Gandola son of Shaw, Gavil Crookhaven, the Mill and Vosh. Colourful Tmur the Void of Erica by Hetra, Hakel Yelmo Marconi Shalon, a far written telegraph echte Egedoil. Ach fe nede kögene halle tri baus en ei gachtlehe ages de valig forewoorn hoige lo harlar beile falke in de dieg egenheimsche and those who remain are either old or middle-aged. It's because of this threatened extinction that we decided to make a film of life in an Irish village. An ordinary place, with nothing special about it, except, of course, that it's dying. population of 150. Now that has dwindled to 70 and is typical of many villages in rural Ireland. The old die, the young leave. Those of us who remain are sad at the prospect. such luxuries as running water, drainage or electricity becomes more and more remote. Fishing is the main source of income and in a good season the men can make enough to see them through the winter. We are fortunate that our harbour has no watershed which makes it one of the finest storage places in Ireland for crayfish. And as long as fishermen fish crayfish and catch them, there will always be a living for someone in Crookhaven. I myself act as agent for the fishermen, but most of my time is taken up with the farm. Every 
morning, I take the milk to the creamery. This is a mobile separating unit which stands outside the village for the benefit of all the farmers roundabouts. The milk is poured into the separator on one side, and on the other, we withdraw whatever we require for our own use. The creamery is of benefit to the farmer inasmuch as it sort of cuts out the middleman. It buys the produce straight from the farmer and sells him anything he requires for his farm or his home, straight from the creamery, with no merchant or middleman getting a cut out of the deal. has had a marked effect on village life. It has become the established meeting place for the farmers. They don't come into the village much anymore except to church on Sunday or to the occasional wedding or wake. lobsters for a French company and anything caught today will be picked up by a French boat within a fortnight. It's a happy arrangement and those Frenchmen are sort of welcome. They supply pots to the fishermen and in some cases they don't take any money for them. When you take your animal to the fair, you first want to find out what he's worth. You meet a buyer. He comes up and says, what do you want for the old cow? What do you want for the heifer? He generally says the little heifer in order to try and weak you. So you start talking, you say, I'm asking 45. And he says, 45 for what? Where's the other one? You say, I want 45 for that one. Then he says, you must be mad. And offers you 35. After a while he says, sort of confidentially, what would you sell it for actually? and he offers you 40. Then you weaken a bit and you ask 44. He offers you 42. Then after a while, some other fellow comes up and says, well, what's between ye? Oh, says I, I'm asking 44 and he's offering 42. Divide it. So you make it 43 and it's generally a deal at that. There used to be many more young faces to be seen on fair days, but See, there's nothing to keep them here. The young girl doesn't want to hang about here. She'd rather be off to England, earning money, having a gay time.
The older generation of farmer is refusing to go with the times, and his son feels less inclined to work for him. If the old fellow makes, say, 200 pounds at the fair, he thinks he'll put it in the bank. But if his son, who's been working for the past year to produce that 200 pounds, asks his father for a fiver, the old man will think he's mad. He'll say, I never got more than a shilling from my father. Here's ten bob, and I think you're doing well. The farmer's refusing to go at the times. This is the village school. There are so few pupils now that it may have to be closed. After school, my two youngest often go down to the shore to pick winkles. They can earn a few bob this way, for the Frenchmen will buy the winkles along with the lobsters. Life for the women can be very dull, especially in the winter. There's nowhere to go, nothing much to do. Generally blows a gale or pours with rain, and it's dark before the clock. They just wait for the summer.
recently, the Bishop of Cork has been calling attention to the situation in rural Ireland. He's telling a lot of facts about the emigration problem, some of which are very distasteful to hear. But apparently, he's getting nowhere. He's just a voice crying in the wilderness. pleasant hours to spend. There was Duffy and Tilly and Flynn and myself, a jollier crowd hard to find. But the thing most important we almost forgot, we may left the piper behind. We invited him down to the party, he brought a bagpipe he chants. We asked him to sing, he says, no, no, I'll play he's a bit of a dance. So he picked up his pipes and began for to play, till someone got fallen about. They cut a big hole in the bag of his pipe, and this was the tune that came out. Ra, ra, lily dum, ra, dum, the doot lum, ra, dum, the day, ra, da, da, doot lum, the day, ra, da, da, doot lum, ra, da, doot When the piper found out that his bags were cut, he made a lap out on the floor. His kitty got walk and it's the pommel style. He landed him under the jaw. <laughs> Mr. <Mescalo>, Louie, <laughs> he came to the all made a right, trying to get out to the door. But the piper had nine of them tied in the count, and swore he could lick twenty more. We invited him down to the party, he brought a bagpipe speech and we asked him to sing and he says, no, no, I'll play he's a bit of a dance. So he picked up his pipes and began for to play, till someone got fallen about. They caught a big hole in the back <laughs> of his pipe and this was the tune that came out. 
To an old fogey like me, this party is great fun. But I suppose it's not much compared with the dance halls, picture palaces and all that, which the young people can get in the cities. They can't think much of it anyway because they're leaving. And although there may be enough work for the haves, there's nothing left for the have-nots. There's no alternative but to emigrate or go on the door. There are more old age pensioners than there are children going to school. In a population of 1,500 at the moment, you may have five or six births in the year. Deaths exceed births by three to one. The old are dying, the youth are going away. This parish is doomed to extinction. It just can't go on. In the ruins of houses, once occupied by people who also danced and sang on Sunday evening. The only music heard now is that of the new occupants, the birds. The old are dying, the youth are going away. Those of us who remain are sad at the prospect. But to us, the village can never die. And our lasting impression must be of a warm, generous community who will live forever, at least in our hearts. Respect to the show that